Hello, welcome to Naresh Technologies. This is Sudhakar Sharma. We are continuing our ASP.NET MVC video session. In our previous video, we discussed about uh, how do we create a controller, how do we configure the controller with scaffolding, without scaffolding. Now, today in this session, we are going to discuss about action methods. So, controller action methods. Generally, the first important point you have to know is, so what is an action method? An action method. So controller is a class which comprises of several action methods. Actually controller is an ordinary C sharp class. That means it can contain all C sharp members. But a controller is a special type of class which contains along with other members, it contains action methods. What is an action method in MVC? Action method is nothing but, so it is a method, method that handles, that handles request and uh, response. That means, it is a method that handles request and response. It is responsible for handling the client request and sending a response to the client. So that means it is uh, responsible, responsible for handling interaction, interaction with client, handling interaction with client. Whenever a client request comes to the controller comprises of several action methods these action methods will define how the interaction should be. These action methods define how the client interaction should handle in an MVC application. So generally, action methods are methods that are used to handle client request, that is a client request and response. So when client makes a request, action methods will send process the request and send a suitable response for that request. So how we can define and differentiate action methods? How to create action methods? So let us see some important tips about that. So how to define, define an action method? How to define an action method? So action method is a method that respond to the client request and sends a customized response for the request. So how do we create such action methods? Because uh, we learnt in MVC framework that when client request comes to server, in MVC the request is routed to the controller. Controller will process that request and uh, if necessary, communicates with model and view and sends a response to the client. So, client request always in MVC is going to be a controller action. So, this action will decide, so how do we respond with the client interactions. So, controller action method, so how to define a controller action method, we will see. Actually. Controller action method is an ordinary same like C sharp method. Then how MVC handler will differentiate between controller action method and ordinary non-action methods means general C sharp methods are known as non-action methods. How do we differentiate and how do we create an action method? What are the basic rules for an action method? The first important point is every controller action method must be public in access. That means the controller action methods must be public in access. They cannot be private, protected internal or protected internal in access. Why? Because usually a client makes a request 
directly from the URL. And if a client makes a request from the URL, the method should be in such a way so that they can be invoked from any location. So that means they should not be private or protected or internal or protected internal, they must be public in access. So every controller action method must be public in access. Next point, it cannot be static. Every controller action method cannot be static method. Why? Because the controller action methods are accessible through a controller object. So that means whenever you request a controller, a controller class object is created. This controller class object will invoke the methods and access the methods. So a controller class directly will not give access to the methods. It will be from a controller object. So it is important that, so it cannot be static. So because static members can be directly accessible through the reference of the class, so class name, so but uh, controller action methods must be accessible through a controller object. So every controller action method must be public in access and it cannot be static. Important, controller action method, it must return a value, it must return a value. That means it must be, it must be defined, defined with a written type, written type. That means it cannot be void. So controller action method must return a value. Why? Because the main intention of action method is to return a response whenever client makes a request. So how it will return a response if it is not defined with any return type? That means every controller action method must be defined with a return type so that whenever clients makes a request, it will return a response to that particular request. So it's mandatory that every controller action method must be defined with a return type. So what are the various return types? We will discuss in later stage various return types. and. It cannot be void, so that means of course void is no return type and it cannot be a void method. So it should return a value, it must be defined with a return type and it cannot be void because so generally it can return uh, methods can return values throughout parameters. So it is a very important that controller action method can be parameterless, can be parameterless or parameterized. Controller action methods can have parameters or parameterless. So if they are having parameters, then the parameters are passed as query strings. If we are implementing techniques like routing, there are various methods of passing the parameters. So a controller action method can allow parameters. Then how we can pass parameters into the method, usually we do that while accessing the method in the URL, we pass the query strings which are treated as parameters. So controller action method can be parameterless or parameterized. If parameterized, then the parameters, then the parameters are passed, are passed in the URL, in the URL as a query strings, as query string. Another important point is uh, if you are implementing routing, then we have a different technique of passing the parameters that we learn later in routing concept. So controller action methods may have parameters. So if they have parameters, the parameters are passed as query string. So we have to remember this important point. Another uh, restriction about the controller action methods is controller action methods it cannot have action method, it cannot have reference or out params. It cannot have reference or out parameters. Controller action methods cannot have reference and out parameters. And it cannot have open generic types. Controller action methods cannot have open generic types. It should have be non-generic types. So controller action methods cannot have any generic type of uh, uh, members in the method. So it cannot have open generic type because generic types will make uh, type safe. So that is the reason the 
written type should be strongly typed, you cannot use any generic types. So, especially while working with the controller action methods. Another important point, controller action method can overload, it can overload. That means, a same name method can be defined with different functionalities. You may be wondering why it have to overload, why because a same name method has to respond to various requests like get and post. That means, method is same, but it will respond to two requests. On get, it will do some functionality, on post, it will do another functionality. So, controller action methods can overload, same name function, but different functionality can be defined. But controller action method, it cannot overwrite, overwrite. So, that means, it cannot, it cannot be extension method. That means, it cannot be, it cannot be any method, any method of uh, controller base class, it cannot be any method of controller base class, any method of controller base class. So, controller action methods cannot be extension methods, that means you cannot override the methods, but controller action methods can overload, that means they can be defined with multiple functionalities, but they cannot override. So, another important point, controller action method, it cannot be marked, it cannot be marked with non-action attribute, because any method that is defined with a non-action attribute, it is not an action method. So, that is the reason controller action methods, we have to make sure that they are not marked with a non-action attribute, then it is not considered as an action method. These are all the basic rules that we need to follow in configuring a controller action methods. So, action methods are the methods that respond to client interactions. So, they are responsible for handling the request and sending the response. And they are also responsible for handling framework level operations, communicating with the model, picking the view, rendering the data into the view, all such interactions are done by action methods. Then how do we define action methods in a controller? We have to follow all the given rules. So, let us take a overview of all the rules what we defined. Controller action method must be public in access, it cannot be static, it must return a value, it must be defined with a return type, it cannot be void, it can be parameterless or parameterized, it can have parameters, so then parameters are passed as query string, it cannot have a reference and out parameters, it cannot have open generic types, it can overload, but it cannot overwrite. So, it cannot have, it cannot be any extension method it cannot be any method of controller base class and it cannot be marked with non-action attributes. Let us see by following all these rules, how we can define a simple action method in the controller. So, I will switch to the Visual Studio and here we have a home controller that we created early. So, let us create an action method here. We need to follow all the basic rules. The first method, every controller action method must be public it must return a value, it can return any type of value. Let us return a string and I say hello and uh, what this method has to do, it should return some welcome to MVC. Because its return type is string, we will just define a return MVC. Now, controller action methods, controller action methods can return any type of value. So, for example, I created one more action method public, so int and I say add, okay. And we are passing some parameters int a, so comma int b. And uh, what it should return? It should return a plus b, okay, fine. That means now we created two methods. Are these action methods? Of course, these are action methods because they are satisfying all the rules that we defined. So, it is public in access, it is returning a value, it is not extension method. So, it is uh, means it is not overriding, overriding and it is not static, it, it is not void, all these basic rules are defined here. So, let us see how to access and run this. So, I will just debug and run the application and our controller name is home and the action name is hello. We have two actions in the controller. So, these are actions. How do we request these actions? Let us see. I am running 
in uh, my default browser just debug F5 and in the URL. So, we need to define the controller name and action name and I am defining the controller name. Controller name is home and the action name, action name is hello and hit enter. You can see we are making a request for home controller hello action then home controller hello action have to return welcome to MVC. Now, we will make a request for another action that we have defined and the action is uh, add, but add is an action method which is expecting some parameters and if you do not pass those parameters and they are non-nullable parameters, then obviously you will get a null exception here. So, the null exception says that the values need to be defined with uh, the parameters must be defined with values a, b because they are integer and non-nullable type. So, how do we pass parameters? In the URL, we learned that parameters are passed as query strings. So, query string, first query string question mark and the query string is a equal to 10, okay fine. And what is the second parameter? Second parameter is passed with ampersand. So, ampersand second parameter is b is equal to some 30 and hit enter it has to get the result and show. That means, a parameter a, a controller action method can be parameterless or parameterized. If it is parameterized the parameters are passed as query strings and we are passing those parameters as query string. So, we learned how to create a controller and how do we define action methods in the controller and what are the basic rules of configuring an action method. So, whenever we are designing a controller, actually a controller can have both non-action and action methods. For example, the point is very simple. Suppose, can't I create a private method in a controller? Can't I create a void method in controller? Of course, controller is an after all C-sharp class. You can create any type of method. For example, I can create a private, so void method called hey as welcome, some welcome and uh, this can have some functionality. But this is not considered as, as an action method because it is just a method defined for the reusability concerns within the application or some other extensibilities. But uh, this method is not considered as an action method. Why? Because if it has to be an action method, then it should follow all the rules that we defined for action method. So, can there be private methods, protected methods, internal methods or protected internal methods in a controller class? Yes. Can there be extensible methods in the uh, controller class? Yes. Can I override the methods in the controller class? Yes. Then uh, what is problem? Those all methods are not considered as action methods. If you have to use them as action methods, then they have to follow all the rules of the defined specifications, right. So, controller action methods are the methods that respond to user request and they should be according to all the rules that we define. Now, what a controller action method can usually return to handle framework level operations, how it communicates with model and view, how it interacts that we will learn in our next session. Thank you. Thank you.